One of the nice things about the diaries is that it's enthusiastic, it's personal. There are one or two places where he throws in a little bit of poetry. <laughs> or totally silly things, you know, saw a newt. Saw the newt again today, it was in exactly the same place it was yesterday. <laughs> and there are things like that which just sort of bring them to light. Charles Alton was one of the early pioneers for recognising the value of progression of animal life and the communities within ecosystems. When White and Wood was donated to the university in 1942, he set it up over a period of about 30 years as a world-class research centre. People came from all over the world to collaborate with him and to explore White and Wood. Elton was very much a man of his time in that he was a very quiet, shy man. He hated having his photograph taken, for example. That's why so few survive. And I attended his lectures. Very boring lecture he was. But his books were extremely interesting. And he was happiest with other scientists and out in the woods. He kept a diary throughout his life. And it certainly continued after he'd retired. So there's a period of about five or six years in the mid 70s where he took up the gauntlet again and went round all the old logs and made notes. At that point, Alton would have been well into his mid 70s and possibly later, and his wife accompanied him on some of those later trips. And there's many, many occasions in which he and his son would go out at four in the morning before the boy went to school and they would make long trips out to Whiteham to listen to birds and observe them before school or work began in the mornings. I grew up at a time when if girls were allowed to study physics and chemistry and biology like the boys did, this was regarded as a very, very great honour and we felt we owed society a debt to continue working uh, as for as long as we possibly could. And an email came round asking for volunteers to transcribe Elson's uh, field notes. So I thought, well, I can do that, why not? In terms of the notes for Whiteham, there are about 400 different entries spread over about 20 odd years. There are bird records, butterfly records, fungal records, plant records. And that is interesting because on the one hand, most people think of him as a zoologist, but he was concerned to look at the interactions between different species and to try and look at the whole system. It's really important that we transcribe Alton's notes and diaries, primarily because it makes it available to the masses. Um, people can access it online and then use it for their research information. One of the things that we were able to do was that there was a rare plant, a yellow bird's nest, which hadn't been seen since 1958 in the woods. By chance, I, when I was reading through, I thought, oh, Elton saw it at Brogdon's Belt, which is quite a narrowly defined piece of the woodland. So we were able to go there at the right time of year and hey presto, there was the plant. It's been sitting there for the last 30 years, just nobody had looked at the right time of year to find it. So it's, it was rather nice sort of you know, rediscovery, as it were. And Charles Elton was such an important player in the discussions that were going on at that time. His diaries filled in this missing link in our study of the history of the woods.